This episode is brought to you by Cisco Educational Premium. Did you know that the direct equation is consistent with Schrodinger equation? In particle physics, the direct equation is a relativistic wave equation derived by the British physicist Paul Dirac in 1928. In its free form, or including electromagnetic interactions, it describes all the spin half massive particles called the direct particles such as electrons and quarks for which parties are symmetric. It is consistent with both the principles of quantum mechanics and the theory of special relativity and was the first theory to account fully for special relativity in the, the context of quantum mechanics. It was validated by accounting for the fine structure of the hydrogen spectrum in a completely rigorous way. The equation also implied the existence of a new form of matter and antimatter previously unsuspected and unobserved and which was experimentally confirmed several years later. It also provided a theoretical justification for the introduction of several component wave functions in Pauli's phenomenological theory of spin. The wave functions in the direct theory are factors of four complex numbers known as bispinals of which resemble the Pauli's wave function in the non-relativistic limit, in contrast to the Schrodinger equation in which described wave function of only one complex value. Moreover, in the limit of zero mass, the Dirac equation reduces the wheel equation. Although Dirac not fully, not at, did not at first fully appreciate the importance of his results, the entire explanation of the of spin as a consequence of the union of quantum mechanics and relativity, and the eventual discovery of the positron, represents one of the great triumphs of theoretical physics. This accomplishment has been described as fully on par with the works of Newton, Maxwell, and Einstein before him. In the context of quantum field theory. The direct equation is reinterpreted to describe quantum fields corresponding to the spin of particles. In its modern form- formulation of the field theory, the direct equation is written in terms of a direct spin of field, psi, taking the values in a complex factor space described concretely as C4 defined on a flat space term, Minkowski space, R13. Its expression also contains gamma matrices in a parameter m greater than zero, interpreted as the mass as well as other physical constants. In terms of the field psi R13 C4, the direct equation evolved and in natural units with Feynman slash notation, the gamma matrices are a set of 4x4 complex matrices which satisfy the defining anti-commutation relations. These matrices can be realized explicitly under choice of representation. Two common choices are the direct representation, where sigma i are the Pauli matrices and the Charles representation, the epsilon i are the same, but epsilon 0 is equivalent to the matrix 0, i2, i2, 0. The slash notation is a compact notation for a the slash epsilon mu a mu where a is a four factor of an it is a four factor differential operator partial mu. The summation over the index mu is implied. The direct adjoin of the spin off field psi x is, is, de- is defined. Since the property of the gamma matrices, which follows straightforwardly from hemicity properties of the epsilon mu, one can derive the adjoint direct equation by taking the Hamiltonian conjugate of the direct equation and multiplying on the right by epsilon zero, where the partial derivative x from the right on psi by x, written in the usual way in terms of the left action, the derivative, applying uh, the I partial the slash plus m to the direct equation that is each component of the direct spin or field satisfy the clean codon equation. A conserved current of the theory is 
J mu kufalantu. Psi bar upsilon mu psi. Proving the conservation from direct equation. So we add the direct and the adjoint direct equation. And by the Leibniz rule, we have I person mu psi bar upsilon mu psi square to zero. Another approach to derive this expression is by variational methods. Applying Nithas theorem for the global U1 symmetry to the derived conserved current J mu. Proving from conservation from Nithas theorem. Recall the Lagrangian. Under the U1 symmetry, which send psi and psi by, we find Lagrangian is invariant. Now, considering the variation parameter alpha to be infinitesimal, we work at the first order in alpha and ignore those terms. From the previous discussion, we immediately see the explicit variation in the Lagrangian due to alpha vanish due to alpha is vanishing. That is under the variation where where, where the, the the term sigma sigma l is equivalent to zero as part of the Nithas theorem we find the implicit variation in the Lagrangian due to variation of fields if the equation of motion for psi psi bar satisfied then we have as follows this immediately simplifies as there are no partial derivatives of psi bar in the Lagrangian. Sigma psi is an infinite small variation. Sigma psi x equivalent to i alpha psi x. And we evaluate as follows. And the equation becomes 0 is equivalent to negative alpha partial mu psi bar epsilon mu psi. We're done. Since the direct operator acts as a fourth tuples, 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 four tuples of the square integrable function, its solution should be members of the same Hilbert space. The fact that the energies of the solution do not have a lower bound is unexpected. Plane wave solutions are those arising from the ansatz which models are particle with a definite four momentum p is equivalent to EPP. For these answers, the direct equation becomes the equation for UP. After picking a representation for the gamma matrices, epsilon mu, solving this is a matter of solving a system of linear equations. It's a representation for the property of gamma matrices. The solution space is a two-dimensional. For example, in the chara representation for for epsilon mu, the solution space is parameterized by c two factor psi, where sigma mu is equivalent to i two sigma i comma sigma bar mu is equivalent to i2 comma minus sigma i and the and the rule dot is the himita matrix square root these plane wave solutions provide a starting point for canonical quantization put the direct equation and the adjoint direct equation can be obtained from varying the action with a specific lagrangian density if one varies this with respect to the to psi, one gets the adjoint direct equation. Meanwhile, if one varies this with, with respect to psi bar, one gets the direct equation. In natural units with a slash notation, for this action, the conserved current J mu above rises as the conserved current corresponds with the global U1 symmetry through Nita's theorem for field theory. Gauging this field theory by changing the symmetry to a local space-time point dependent one 
gives gauge symmetry really gauge redundancy the resultant theory is the quantum electrodynamics qed the direct equation is invariant under lorentz transformations that is under the action of the lorentz group so13 or strictly so13 plus the component connected to the identity for a direct spin or field concretely as taking values in c4 the transformation and lorentz transformation lambda is given by a 4 by 4 complex matrix as lambda there are some subtleties in defining the corresponding s lambda as well as a standard abuse of notation most treatments occur at the lie algebra level the lorentz group of a 4 by 4 real matrices acting on r13 is generated by a set of six matrices m mu nu when both the rho sigma integers are raised or lowered these are simply the standard basis of anti-symmetric matrices this satisfies the lorentz algebra commutation relations this also found that the spin generators satisfy the lorentz algebra commutation relations a Lorentz transformation lambda can be written on where the components omega mu nu are anti-symmetric in mu nu. The corresponding transformation on spin space. This is an abuse of notation, but a standard one. The reason is S lambda is not a well-defined function of lambda, since there are two different sets of components, uh, omega mu nu up to equivalence which give the same lambda but different s lambda in practice we implicitly pick one of these omega mu nu and then s lambda in a world is well defined in terms of omega mu nu under Lorentz transformation the direct equation becomes an evolves i think uh, it's clear let us remind ourselves of the proof of Lorentz invariance. Both blank put side from the left by S negative 1 lambda and returning the dumb variables to X. We'll have shown invariance if if we if it is S lambda negative 1 epsilon mu S lambda lambda negative 1 nu mu equivalent to epsilon epsilon nu this is most easily shown at the algebra level supposing that transformation are parameterized by infinite small components omega mu nu then then at first order in omega on the left hand side while on the right hand side it's a standard exercise to evaluate the commutator on the left hand side Writing the m rho sigma in terms of components completes the proof. Associated to the Lorentz variance is a conserved nether current, or rather a tensor of conserved nether currents, j rho sigma nu. Similarly, since the equation is invariant under translations, there is a tensor of conserved nether currents t mu nu which can be identified as a stress energy tensor of the theory the lorentz current j rho sigma nu can be written in terms of stress energy tensor in addition to a tensor representing internal angular momentum this episode is brought to you by cisco educational premium did you know that spin is an inherent property of a quantum particle spin is a conserved quantity carried by elementary particles and thus by uh, composite particles or hadrons and atomic nuclei spin is one of two types of angular momentum in quantum mechanics the other being orbital angular momentum the orbital angular momentum operator is the quantum mechanical counterpart the classical angular momentum 
of Obido revolution and appears when the periodic structure to its wave function as the angle varies. For photons, spin is the quantum mechanical counterpart of the polarization of light for electrons. The spin has no classical counterpart. The existence of electron spin angular momentum is inferred from experiments such as the Stan Galak experiment in which silver atoms were observed to possess two possible discrete angular momenta despite having no orbital angular momentum. The existence of the electron spin can be inferred theoretically from the spin statistics theorem and from the Pauli exclusion principle and vice versa. Given the particular spin of the electron, one may derive the Pauli exclusion principle. Spin is described mathematically as a vector for some particles such as photons and as spinners and by spinners for other particles such as electrons. Spinners and by spinners behave similarly to vectors. They have definite magnitudes and change under rotations. However, they use an unconventional direction. And I quote, All elementary particles of a given kind have the same magnitude of spin angular momentum, though its direction may change. These are indicated by assigning the particle a spin quantum number. The SI unit of spin is the same as classical angular momentum. In practice, spin is given as a dimensional as a dimensionless spin quantum number by dividing the spin angular momentum by the reduced Planck's constant, which has the same dimensions as angular momentum. Although this is not the full computation of this value. Very often the and I quote, quantum number is simply called spin. The fact that it is a quantum number is implicit. As the name suggests, spin was originally conceived as the rotation of a particle around some axis. While the question of where the elementary particles actually rotate is ambiguous, as they appear point like. This picture is correct insofar as spin obeys the same mathematical laws as quantized angular momenta do. In particular, spin implies that the particle phase changes with angle. On the other hand, spin has some peculiar properties that distinguish it from orbital bit angular momenta. These properties are 1. Spin quantum numbers may take half integer values. 2. Although the direction of its spin can be changed, an elementary particle cannot be made to spin faster or slower. 3. The spin of a charged particle is associated with a magnetic dipole moment with a g factor different from 1. This could occur classically only if the internal charge of the particle were distributed differently from its mass. The conventional definition of spin quantum number is S is equivalent to N on 2 where N can be any non-negative integer. Hence the allowed values of S are 0, half 1, 3 on 2, 2, etc. The value of S for an elementary particle depends only on the type of particle and cannot be altered in any known way in, contra in contrast to the spin direction. We will be seeing the spin angular momentum s of any physical system is quantized. The allowed values of s are s equivalent to reduced Planck's constant root s on n plus 1 is equivalent to Planck's constant on 2 pi root of n on 2 n plus 2 on 2 is equivalent to h on 4 pi root on root of n into n plus 2 where h is the Planck constant and h the dash is the reduced Planck's constant which is equivalent to h on 2 pi 
In contrast, Obedo Angel and Momentum can only take on integer values of s, that is even numbered values of n. Those particles which have integer sprints, such as have 3 on 2, 5 on 2, are known as fermions. While those particles with integer sprints, such as 0, 1, 2, etc., are known as bosons. The two families of particles obey different rules and broadly have different roles in the world around us. A key distinction between the two families is that the fermions obey the Pauli exclusion principle. That is, they cannot be two identical fermions simultaneously having the same quantum numbers, meaning roughly having the same position, velocity, and spin direction. Fermions obey the rules of Fermi direct statistics. In contrast, bosons obey the rules of Bose Einstein statistics and have no such restriction, so they may bunch up together in identical states. Also, composite particles can have spins different from their component particles. For example, a helium photon in the ground state has spin zero and behaves like a boson. Even though the quarks and electrons which make it up are all fermions. This has some profound consequences. Number one is that quarks and leptons, including electrons and neutrinos, which make up what is classically known as matter, are all fermions with spin half. The common idea that Matter takes up space actually comes from the Pauli exclusion principle acting on these particles to prevent the fermions from being in the same quantum state. Further compaction would require electrons to occupy the same energy states and therefore a kind of pressure, sometimes known as degeneracy pressure of electrons, acts to resist the fermions being overly close. The meant that fermions with other spins, 3 on 2, 5 on 2, etc., are not known to exist. 2. Elementary particles, which are thought of as carrying forces, are all bosons with spin 1. They include the photon, which carries the electromagnetic force, the glue on which, also the strong force, and the W and Z bosons, weak force. The ability of bosons to occupy the same quantum state is used in the laser, which aligns many photons having the same quantum number, the same direction and frequency. Superfluid liquid helium resulting from helium photons obeying bosons and superconductivity, where pairs of electrons, which individually are fermions, act as single composite bosons. Elementary bosons with other spins, 0, 2, 3, and etc were not historically known to exist, although they have received consider considerable theoretical treatment and are well established within their respective main mainstream theories. In particular, traditions have proposed the graviton predicted to exist by some quantum gravity theories with spin 2, and the Higgs boson explaining electroweak symmetry breaking with spin 0. Since 2013, the Higgs boson with spin zero has been considered proven to exist. It is the first scalar elementary particle, spin zero, known to exist in nature. And the last is that atomic nuclei have a nuclear spin, which may be either half integer or integer, so that the nuclei may be either fermions or bosons. The spin statistics theorem splits particles into two groups, bosons and fermions, where bosons obey Bose-Einstein statistics and fermions obey Fermi-Dirac statistics, and therefore the Pauli exclusion principle. Specifically, the theory states that the particles with an integer spin are bosons, while all other particles have, have integer spins and are fermions. As an example, Electrons have half integer spin and are fermions that obey the Pauli exclusion principle, while photons have integer spin and do not. 
The theorem relies on both quantum mechanics and the theory of special relativity. And this connection between spin and statistics has been called, and I quote, one of the most important applications of the special relativity theory. Sun's and elementary particles are point-like. Self-rotation is not well defined for them. However, spin implies that the face of the particle depends on the angle as e i s theta for rotation of angle theta around the axis parallel to the spin s. This equivalent to the quantum mechanical interpretation of momentum as phase dependence in the position and of optical angular momentum as phase dependence in the angular position. Photon spin is the quantum mechanical description of light polarization, where spin plus one and spin minus one represent two opposite directions of circular polarization. Thus, light over defined circular polarization consists of photons, the same spin eta plus one or minus one. Spin represents polarization for the factor bosons as well. For fermions, the picture is less clear. Angular velocity is equal by Renfer's theorem, the derivative of the Hamiltonian to its conjugate momentum, which is the total angular momentum operator J is equivalent to L plus S. Therefore, if the Hamiltonian H is dependent upon the spin S, the H on DS is non zero and the spin causes angular velocity and hence angular rotation. That is a change in the phase angle relation over time. However, whether this holds for free electron is ambiguous since for an electron, S raised to 2 is constant and therefore it is a matter of interpretation whether the Hamiltonian includes such a term. Nevertheless, spin appears in the direct equation and thus the Relativistic Hamiltonian of the electron treated as a direct field can be interpreted as including a dependence in the spin S. Under this interpretation, free electrons also self rotate with a step back, fact understood as this rotation. Particles with spin can possess magnetic dipole moment just like a rotating electrically charged body in classical electrodynamics. These magnetic moments can be experimentally observed in several ways. For example, by the deflection of particles by inhomogeneous magnetic fields in a stern galak experiment, or by measuring the magnetic fields generated by the particles themselves. This episode is brought to you by Cisco Educational Premium. Did you know that Stokes Law is a mathematical equation? The equation expresses certain velocities of small spherical particles in a fluid medium. The equation was derived in 1851 by Sir George G. Stock, Stock, Stocks and can help us understand miracles like why the raindrop does not kill us even though they are falling from tremendous heights. Looking at Stock's law equation, the symbol F is the viscous drag. The R you see there is the radius of the sphere falling through the fluid. N is the fluid viscosity and V is the velocity of the sphere. F is equivalent to 6 pi. Uh, that symbol uh, that looks like N R V. How do we derive this equation? We know that viscous force act acting on a sphere is directly proportional to the radius of the sphere R. Coefficient of viscosity a constant of Yasele is this symbol that looks like an N but with one leg being short. We call this eta in Greek, it is a Greek symbol. And the velocity of object falling is V. Mathematically, we can represent this as F to be proportional to eta sub, sub a 
R sub B B R sub B phi sub 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 C okay okay let us find the values of A B and C so substituting the proportionality sign with an equality sign we get F is equivalent to K eta sub A R sub B phi sub C notice that we have introduced proportionality constant because we have removed our proportionality sign let us call this our equation one in this equation k is the constant of proportionality then now writing the dimensions of parameters on either side of the equation we get square bracket mlt raised to negative 2 closing the square bracket is equivalent to opening the square bracket ml raised to negative 1 t raised to negative 1 closing the square bracket raised to a is equivalent to square bracket l closing the square bracket sub b square bracket lt raised to negative 1 closing the square bracket sub c simplifying this we get square bracket mlt raised to negative 2 bracket is equivalent to m raised to a dot l raised to negative a plus b plus c dot t minus a minus c t raised to negative a negative c let us call this our equation 2 now we know that in classical mechanics mass length and time are independent entities now equating the superscript or subs of mass length and time respectively from our second equation we obtain a to be equivalent to one let's call this equation three negative a plus b plus c is equivalent to one let us call this our equation four and negative a minus c is equivalent to negative two or a plus c is equivalent to 2. Let's call this our equation 5. Now, substituting the, substituting the equation 3 in equation 5, we obtain 1 plus c is equivalent to t. And so, c is equivalent to 1. Let's call this our equation 6. Now, substituting the value of equation 3 and 6 in equation 4, we get negative 1 plus b plus 1 is equivalent to 1. Then doing some simplif simplification as it is obvious, b is equivalent to 1. Let's call this our equation 7. Now substituting the value of equation 3, 6 and 7 in equation 1, we obtain f is equivalent to k eta rv. And to obtain those other terms in our in the Stokes equation, it has been observed by and determined by experiment that the value of k for a spherical body has been determined as 6 pi. And thus, the equation gives the fiscus force on a spherical body falling through a fluid. So we have f is equivalent to 6 pi eta rv. Now let us come to our raindrop. Initially, it's a, it's a, it's, it accelerates due to gravity. As the velocity increases, the retarding force also increases. And finally, when the fiscus force and the buoyant force is equal to the force due to gravity, the net force then becomes zero. So does acceleration. The result is that the raindrop then falls with a constant velocity called terminal velocity on equilibrium terminal velocity v sub t summarized by the equation v sub t is equivalent to 2 r square bracket rho minus sigma bracket g on 9 eta the simple rho is the sphere mass and sigma is the fluid mass the, the stokes law equation was first draft in 1851 by George Gabriel Stokes. No under the name.
So Square Educational Premium is a section of Cisco Educationals with content that is not hosted here. There are episodes ranging from long to short videos. Remember those good old shots of ours? They are there. So do we get there? Use the link on screen or in the description or in the pinned comment below. Enjoy yourself. Now we'll see you in the next episode of Cisco Educationals.